Hi hi, Maud here and today I have a few things on my desk that I wanted to show you. Um, the sewing basket that I did in my last video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. Um, my finished block for Roxy's Journal of Stitches. Um, two books that I bought in February and the start of what is going to be. <laughs> this is a really old blanket that I found in the thrift store. But um, this is going to be a needle book that will go into this basket. But um, what to start with first? Scoot everything over. <laughs> first, uh, let me zoom you in. The wrong side. This is my page for February. I could do even more stitching, but this is what it is right now. And it's almost the end of February. So I will put it in my book, not uh, sew it in just yet. And if I feel like coming back to it, I can do some more stitching, perhaps on these uh, Suffolk puffs or yo-yos. Uh, for me, it's the first time ever making these. I I love them. Uh, these two are made of silk and these are made of, this is of a vintage fabric and these are uh, quilting fabrics. And if you hear noises in the background again, that's my family. They're <laughs> enjoying themselves having holidays. So um, yeah. You hear my son laughing. <laughs> That's okay, I think. Um, so yeah, this is my page for February. And I'm really looking forward for what uh, the two sisters are coming up for for March. And um, yeah, I am enjoying this embroidery and sewing so much. I will go back to junk journaling for sure. But... For now, it is sewing that has caught my attention. And therefore, I also bought these two books. Let me zoom you out again a little bit. I buy these books online for the Dutch people. Uh, a well-known uh, site to go for for books is bol.com. Uh, I'm not sponsored. I won't. <laughs> I won't put them down in the prescription box because uh, they are huge here in the Netherlands if you want books. But also I can get all these English books that I can't get anywhere else. So I do appreciate that they are around. But I also want to support the small bookstores. So yeah, I also go to, to small bookstores also online. And I also like to thrift books. But... These books will, will never be available, I think, in the thrift store. Because thrift stores also know the, the value of books. So they will probably, if they, if they get one of these books, they will probably sell them at Marketplace. I like this book because it is mentioning the, the benefits of slow stitching and all the ways that you can slow stitch. Um, I saw this book in somebody else's video i think it was rachel who, who or sarah who showed this book um and then i also because when at ball.com when you look at the books they also recommend other books and then i saw this one and and this is kind of the whole idea about um what we are doing with this uh, journal of stitchery um this author, Tilly Rose, also makes um, stitchery books. So I thought it was really, um, yeah, really a lot of fun. And also good for me to, to, to have a book that I can go um, flip through and see how she puts the things together and have more perspectives on making uh, fabric journals like this. So I'm 
reading in this book and I'm reading in this book so simultaneously that's me I, I skip from one book to the other so two books I'll probably finish them within a week and then my sewing basket uh, I told you I am slowly filling it up but then I already had a couple of tins that fitted in here really well these tins are from the 1990s when I discovered this this tea brand it came to the Netherlands then this tin is is empty until now but I probably will find something to fill it up with this tin contains buttons and uh, snap fasteners that um, yeah, I would like to take along when we go on camper ride. Um, probably I'll use them more for uh, decorating things that I'm working on than I will mend anything. But if I need to mend anything, I have some buttons. And also if I want to do some sewing, uh, some... Um, decorative sewing i have something to take with me in this tin i put uh, some small wooden spools that i bought in action and i've put some embroidery thread on here just basic colors and um yeah this is just because i already had this that i'm putting it in there if we go on a holiday with our camper i'll probably take these out and uh, put in some colors that i love at that moment but for now this is this is perfectly fine and then i have this tin that's still empty but it just fitted in there perfectly so already four th four tins in there two of them empty but i can put little trinkets in there this is still empty and this afternoon I plan to to do a little shopping trip to Hema. Um, most of the European uh, people know Hema, a Dutch chain of, of, of warehouses. And um, online they showed all kinds of uh, sewing um, things. And I'm going to have a look if there are sewing notions that I want to put in here. Um, obviously I've got needles enough I've got pins enough and I've got uh, I've got enough of everything really but I want some scissors and a measuring tape and um, some little things that I want to put in here that I don't need to take out uh, for use at home but I can just leave in here for our camper trips and then I wanted to make another needle case, a needle booklet, and I'm going to use these. Um, this was sent to me by Maya. Hello, Maya. <laughs> the Maya lives in the south of, Netherland of the Netherlands, and she also has a YouTube channel and a Instagram. So I'm going to link Maya down below. She also does some beautiful videos, so go and check out Maya. And uh, Maya sent me this because I live in Friesland. And uh, this, I looked it up, um, Frisian folklore clothes. This is a mixture of various clothes. Uh, but I went to Hindelope, which is a place in the west of Friesland. I live in the east. And uh, I, well, this... I bought this a long time ago, but I saw in the window the the costume of Hindelope again, and it, it doesn't look like this. It's much more beautiful. But these are some of the, well, this not, but these are some of the fabrics that I bought in that store where they sell a lot of the, of the folklore fabrics. And I want to use parts of this, but also... I want to use a little bit of lace because lace is often a common thing in, in folklore clothing. Uh, this might be a little bit too coarse because I want a small needle booklet. But just so you have an idea, I might use a smaller piece of lace. And I have this blanket 
that I found a really long time ago. It is um, really old. It's by Phoenix Daken. So it, oh, sorry, I was out of frame. Uh, Phoenix Daken, um, probably in an old Dutch brand, I'm not too sure. But um, it is woven and it is felted in some places more than others. So I'm going to see which parts that I want to use to put my needles in. This part is really thin and worn, but this part is a lot thicker. So I don't know what parts I want to use for the, for the pages. You can see the difference. This is much more felted and you see the woven parts here. So it, it is a little bit different from place to place inside the blanket. But um, yeah, I will see which parts I want to use. For now, let me start by seeing what I want to do as a front of the needle booklet. And for that, I also want this to be open because I kind of want to see the size that I want to do it. Mm, it mustn't be higher than, than this. I think a little bit smaller and about this size. So let me take my ruler out. Let me see what size I want this to be. B. I think about 10 centimeters by 7 or 8. Let me take a little bit of paper and a pencil. Because that makes my life easier always. About seven, ten. Or eight. I think I have eight here. So I think I want the needle booklet to be this size. then fold it double so I need double this and um, I'm going to pause the video here a little bit because I need some time to figure out the the fabrics that I'm going to use and um, Maya I hope you <laughs> You're, you're not going to be angry at me. I'm going to cut this lady out because this is far too big. But I want her on the front side of my page, I think. With a little bit of these fabrics. So yeah, I'm going to pause the video here for a little bit and I will be back. So this is what I have so far. I will zoom you in. And um, I've used the, the parts of the blanket that were um, yeah, loosely woven. I think this is um, yeah, where, it, where the blanket is worn the most. And I kept this where I took out the label. I think I want the label on the back side. And I'm going to cut similar sizes out of this to, to have for the, the, the page where I can put my needle on. And I think I'm going to keep this. So let me just see if I cut this out. Oh, 
what this will look like for a page to put my needles on. I think it will be fine. Oh, yes. <laughs> it makes the book look chunk chunky. But I think if I keep it like this, just with one page or, or one double page, it will be enough. I will have to do a blanket stitch all around this part and not so much around this part. Perhaps I will also do it, but the difference between the thickness of the still intact woolen blanket and the worn woolen blanket is, whoa, is a lot. I kept these kind of torn. I like that look. And I also want a little bit of lace on here because it, yeah, lace is something that was used in folklore um, costumes so much. So let me see. I've got a basket here full of little leftovers. And let me see what will work. <laughs> I've got a lot. I want something that's small yeah, this is looking nice um, I'm not going to use this one this is much too coarse for how small this is let me see what else I can use this is also really nice and it might strengthen the top quite a bit so yeah I'm going to use this this is also really nice but I don't think this will work this time Perhaps underneath here, but no, that takes away of the blanket too much. These laces are probably not really that old but they give me the feeling of the costumes and that's okay this is really nice oh some tulips might be nice nah tulips are not for friesland this is a nice piece i don't want the phoenix the letters covered but perhaps this could go underneath hmm. this looks better but then I would cover this up I don't want to no No, I think I will leave it like this. And keep this as pages inside. Yeah. I'm going to pin everything down. Get my pins. You know, the, <laughs> the big pin cushion that I have. And I'm going to use these really small quilting pins to pin everything down. Oh, 
I really like this on the back side so I can preserve that part of the blanket. I've ironed it, but it won't take a, a, a rectangle shape anymore, but that's okay. I have some beautiful thread here that matches the color of the blanket very well. It is, what is it? What's the kind of thread? It is a cotton thread, mercerized. And I know it is used in miniatures, in miniature worlds to, to do some um, crocheting with. But for now, I will keep it for um, sewing everything down. And I love that it has the same color of the blanket. And I will do a little bit of stitching on camera. Just to show you how I would stitch everything down. And obviously you're going to see all the stitching on the back side as well. So that will be on the inside of my booklet. So that's why this color is really nice to work with. And I will tie the thread off underneath this label with just a few stitches. Now I will continue sewing everything down and I will show you uh, once everything is done. So you guys, I did a lot of stitching and now I'm doing the last row of um, running stitch and this is what it looks like at the back. So you can see these stitches and you can even see the darker blue fabric through here. That's how thin this blanket is. but. With all these stitches, it's held together quite nicely. I'm going to do the last row of running stitch on this lace. And I'm feeling that this lace is um, not made of cotton. It's made of syn synthetic material, so it's probably not that old. But then again, it strengthens strengthens this very well was i in frame so that's a bonus and here i have to go through a couple of layers of fabric doing some really tiny stitches to end the thread here. It's no longer perfectly rectangle, uh, but I'm okay with that. that gives it an even better look, I think. And now I have to do a blanket stitch all around, also on this side, but I don't want to lose the fraying. 
So I will do the blanket stitch in between. And for doing a blanket stitch, I think I want a thread that kind of matches, but it's not um, completely similar. But I want a, a, a thicker thread. I think this one is best. I need a larger needle, this one or, ah, they're the same. And I like to start with the tricky parts, so have that over with. I'm going in between the layers again. I just do. Smallest knot I can make here. So it kind of blends in with uh, the fabric that I have here. Um, and now for a blanket stitch. I think I will uh, stay on the upper part of this fabric because if I would put it around, then I would lose all this fraying, I'm afraid. I'm going to try something. I'm not sure if it is going to work, but um, fingers crossed. And it's pulling up some of the knot that I made, but let me continue. you can hardly see anything on the back. I think this is going to work to keep all the fraying that I love and make sure that the blanket doesn't deteriorate even more. So I'm making sure that I'm taking all these uh, fibers into the stitching so they won't fray any further. And I am attaching them to this um, cotton because that's much uh, sturdier. And here I don't have the cotton to pull on, so you can see I'm I'm pulling the fibers apart, so I I can't um, pull on it really tightly, but it will keep everything intact. I'm hoping. <laughs> and down here I'm just going to continue this line that I already have up there.
So this part can fray eventually. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it like this or pull out the fibers anyway because they're going to go out in the end anyway. I'm just going to leave it like that. And here I am going to go over the fabric. And borrowing some of the strength of these additional um, fabrics that I put on because they're much stronger. So then you get this on the back. You see the blanket stitch where you did not see it here at all. I'm going to blanket stitch all around and um, show you how I attach these pages in between the booklet. So here's where I am this far. Um, my squeaky chair, excuse me. I did have to blanket stitch this also because um, I tried to pull a little bit and it did come off. So this blanket was woven and then felted, but that means that um, yeah, the felting is not strong enough to keep the woven parts from fraying. But now let's put this in here. And to show you that I did keep the size of the, jour of the journal, well, a little stitching journal. It is the exact size that I wanted. That's more luck than wisdom. But nevertheless, um, yeah, I want this sandwiched in here. Let me see that it is sandwiched well. I do want this to be a little bit straight. Not everything has to be wonky. Although I do like this being a little bit wonky. It's not straight at all anymore. And that's perfectly fine. So. This looks good. Now let me. Put a pin in the middle then, a rather big pin, and an even larger one. And let me see once more if this is okay. Yes, this is the back side. Is this the center? Yeah, more or less. So attaching this on, I think on the outside, I want a small button. And why not choose from my old buttons. This is a mother of pearl. That would be nice. No. This would be nice. This is also mother of pearl inlaid in... I think it's copper or something that would be nice also. Oh, and these buttons are so nice. These are old um, tin buttons that they uh, painted, but the paint is coming off 
And so now you can see the, the metal again. I love these. I keep them. Uh, let me see what else. Another mother of pearl. I don't have many buttons in here, but that's okay. Mm. Do I want a little button on the outside to start this off? I think I do. And I'm just going to leave the tail as it is. And just do a running stitch to the other side. I can follow this line of the um, of the label that was inside so that makes my life a little easier. I think I like another button up here. And this time I've got four holes or shall I use another one with just two holes? And use that one. Yeah, I might use that one there. Use this one here. Oh, sorry, you guys, I was off camera. And I need to work a little bit higher for you guys. What I would like to do with this leftover is finding a bead, putting a bead on there and have this dangling. Or I might have some um, embellishments. Hold on a second. I will be. Look what I have here. I knew I had these. And um, this was uh, silver colored and I dyed it with alcohol inks. So I'm going to put this one on here. I have it dangling there. might put a dab of blue on there mm. 
Now I know it won't go anywhere. And what I also want is a little closure on the front because this is rather bulky. Oh, it looks nice on the outside also. So this is the front, the back and the spine with the little dangle that I can also put on the inside, of course. But how about making a little closure on here? And the funny thing is you just see this little <laughs> rectangle, but if you would see outside of this little rectangle, it is exploded, really. So what I like about doing this so much is that everything I've done in junk journaling these past <coughs> few years, it all comes back in, in, in working with, with fabric now for me. And I really like it. Again, I'm just going to do a single thread. Well, I, I doubled my thread, so it will be strong enough. And if you are like, oh, Maud, um, everything's fine, but uh, when are you going back to paper? I'm not sure, but I will, I will work with paper again, I'm sure. I will probably make another journal I'm not, sh I'm not sure soon, but I will probably make another journal. What work would work better than a button is if I would take out a little embellishment of cloth to put on here. And also on the outside. Yeah, so I'm going to have to leave you again and I will be back. So I found a nice piece of felt that I wanted on there and I did it with some invisible stitches. I'm sorry, you guys, I thought I had the camera on, but I <laughs> apparently didn't. But that is secured. It is on there. And I also found a few little seed beads that I thought would be nice on here. So I've got um, a bead needle, which is completely thin. And this is really old thread, um, but it's really strong. It, it's perfect, so I'm going to use it. And... Um, yeah, I just want a few beads on here. So first let me... I'm going in between the layers. I'm making sure that I'm staying in between these layers. Just put that one here. And since this is the last one, I am going through the whole fabric. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it is a nice layer of just a few beads on there.
and again going in between the layers to a different area and going back and forth a couple of times so this will be my needle booklet and i've got the one that i showed you before and this one is exactly half of the big one and i've been to hema in the meantime so i bought a couple of things to go inside my basket um pins embroidery needles assorted needles and um, some good uh, scissors and the funny thing is if you buy scissors you need scissors to to take them out of the packaging and I bought a tape measure And I really like these ones because, um, you know, the old fashioned ones that you had to roll up yourself. Um, they always get tangled in with other bits and bobs in the inside your basket. So let me see. Ah, no, it doesn't fit. That's a shame. So maybe these two, let me zoom you out again a bit yeah so these two tins contain nothing yet so i'm not sure if i'm keeping them in there it, it is nice to keep them in here but they serve no purpose so that's a bit mm, odd i had a, a seam ripper left I want it in here also because it is a beautiful green and it ties in with the other greens some fabric scissors to put in here or oh, they fit in here nicely also let me see if they if I can put them in here eh, no. so just in there um, and then the tape measure. I want a couple of pins. And I want some needles on here. Some embroidery needles. It's not that I don't have any needles, but oh, I couldn't resist. And probably when I'm traveling with our camper van, I'll have these needles and I will probably, if I see um, <laughs> a haberdashery store or quilting shop, I'll probably go in and um, get some lovely things because probably I think I'm short of something once I'm on the road. And we're not going out for a long time yet, but... It's so nice to work on this and to, yeah, to, to, to dream of days when we will travel again. So she can go into the the basket and I have a couple of uh, safety pins here that I love to have dangling there and and there's still room for 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 things to to get in here but um, for now this is going to be it and uh, thank you so much for everyone who gave such nice comments on me um, mending this basket and uh, fixing her up and I hope you enjoy 
this little making of a, a needle booklet also. And it's, it's kind of in a junk journal style. And I hope you appreciate that. Um, if you like this video, again, please leave this, this video a thumbs up. And if you have some time, I would so appreciate a nice comment. For now, thank you from yet again a rainy Netherlands. And I hope to see you again really soon. Bye-bye for now.